Yeah, I'm Bert from uh, Progressa. We're here at the NAM 2017 show uh, to, sh to show our new um, product, uh, Sinter System 8, uh, which consists of our new Progressa engine uh, synthesis uh, unit, as well as our Progressa remote control surface, as well as the latest generation of the Progressa audio cubes. This is now the third generation. Um, and so this whole system integrates with it easily with itself. Um, you have a wireless base station inside the remote which connects to the cubes wirelessly and the remote connects with USB to our synthesis engine. Uh, synthesis engine runs uh, latest Linux kernel version 4, has top-notch uh, digital, digital to analog and analog to digital converters from AKM up to 115 dB, 192 kilohertz and 32 bit. Um, it has a wide format uh, 1600 pixel uh, display, full color. Um, yeah, so what's special about this modular synthesis system is it's fully digital um, and it's all the patching is done in the system. There is, is no patching on the computer. So it's not like with other systems, like let's say Nord Modeler, where you have editing software on the computer and then you have the unit itself. Here it's, it, it's just the unit itself and you don't edit on the computer, you do it all in the system. And you basically patch and modulate using the cubes. So the cubes represent the modules in the system. And as you put the cubes next to each other, patch connections are created. And as you move them further and closer to each other, you scale the modulation signals. So for example, I have these four cubes here. I have an output cube, which is the yellow one. I'll put the other ones on the side for a moment. And the green ones are, are oscillators. And so when I put one of the green ones next to the, the yellow one, you will see that there is a signal on the display here. Right here. Yeah. yeah, if you can see it. Um, and then um, I can add more cubes. It's holding. As we go. No, 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 no. Now we have three sine waves which are playing together. And then I can change uh, the frequency and a, a whole bunch of other settings on the unit directly using these rotary encoders. These are uh, aluminum knobs, metal encoders, high resolution. So. So, as you move these cubes further away, you'll notice that I can mix more or less of the different signals together. I can of course also change things like like waveforms. Um, I can make this one uh, sawtooth, for example. Square wave. There's also an effects, global effects section where you can change the delay and the reverb. You can add more reverb. Um, yeah, what else? There is a, a bunch of different modules built into the system. Um, so there is a LFO, I mean this, this is, LFO is just the main oscillator, there is no other oscillators, it's all called LFO basically, but it goes up to audio rate. So you get percussion sounds running on the sampler, driven by the step sequencer, which is driven by an oscillator. So if I increase the frequency of the oscillator, it acts as a clock for the step sequencer, so it runs faster can go really fast.
There's also a clock division here, so you can divide the tempo by a certain factor to slow it down or like speed it up. You can set the length of the pattern. You can set the length of the step. Um, yeah, you've got up to 64 patterns per, per step sequencer, but you can have as many step sequencers as you want. There's the comb filter, wave shaper, state variable filter. Let's see if there is there's another preset in here that I might interesting to show. So you can switch presets. That's the other interesting thing. You can create presets and then you can easily recall them, which is also not possible to do with like traditional analog modelers. You have to like really go in and patch everything again. Here you just press a button and it calls up all the new um, settings, all the new modules and everything, and it instantly links it wirelessly to the cubes. So there is nothing you have to do in terms of configuration. You press a button and you have your setup. Um, oh, another interesting thing is there is a depth editor here, which is the main modulation editor where you can configure which cubes are allowed to modulate which other cubes. So for example, if you have two oscillators, but you, you don't want the first one to modulate the second one, but the other way around, you do want it, then you can set, you can configure all that here. You can, you can save all these modulation settings in a preset as well. And then when you recall the preset, it loads all the modulation settings, all the rules, and it will keep those in mind as you move the cubes around and as you create patch connections. So this way, you won't have a situation where everything is modulating everything else you can limit the, the, the allowed modulations as you work on it. On the back of the unit, we have a bunch of different IOs. We have um, stereo input, which could be used for sampling. There is six individual outputs, of which the first, the first two ones are the main output. And then those two outputs are also going to the uh, headphone out. And, um, well, there's the DC input jack, which is in the middle, and then there is three MIDI connectors, MIDI in, through, and out, which can be used for generating MIDI using the cubes. And then there is an SD card slot, which is used for storing all your data and for starting up the unit and all that stuff. And then there is a USB peripheral connector, which you can use to um, record digitally into your computer. So when you connect it, it shows up as a USB audio class device and you can directly connect into your DAW or whatever. So it's really a combination of like old ideas of synthesis and modern workflow, modern, modern user interface um, and no separation of the unit itself and the editing software. It's all one thing. The price will be announced tomorrow as we start talking to dealers. Uh, availability, uh, we're looking to start shipping within eight weeks.